Right, I think we're live. So um, welcome everyone. If you are someone who needs to get paying clients fast, then you need to watch this video. You need to pay close attention because you're about to see a really inspirational story of someone who a month ago knew that she needed clients, but didn't really know the exact steps to get there, how she's taken action over the last 28 days and has now just landed her first high paying client. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <Excited>. <laughs> <laughs> so um, with no further ado, if we haven't connected yet, I'm Bernadette Doyle and for over 20 years I've been helping coaches, consultants, therapists, trainers to get more clients and then actually to grow your business from a place of confidence when you know exactly how to get the clients you want, when you want, whenever you want. And I want to introduce you to Esther and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce her surname. <laughs> so over to you. I proceed this. <laughs> And so tell us a little bit about you, Esther, and, uh, you know, how we first connected. Yeah, um, well, I'm a mum of three boys. I still got one who's going to uh, primary school. And Bernadette and I connected already last year sometime, and I was still in a full-time marketing um, manager position back then, before we even knew that COVID was going to hit us on the horizon. So, um, you know, it's fortuitous in a way. I wasn't quite ready to sign up to um, her, was it Fast Track Profits um, course at the time? Because um, I thought I could figure this out. I'm a marketing person. That's my background. <laughs> so I thought I had all the answers. And um, low, and I also was running um, a part-time sort of therapy centre business uh, based at the Holiday in Cardiff North. Well, as you know, we had to shut down um, in March this year. And I was also put on furlough for my um, full-time marketing manager position. I then thought, well, I've got to do something with this energy alignment method that I qualified in last year. And it's always been in the back of my head. And that's why I reached out to Bernadette in the first place, because I thought maybe she can help me. Um, she's a coach, so she knows this territory, <laughs> this, idea, this whole, um, yeah, this whole landscape of coaching. So, yeah, I um, started doing things myself. I created my website. Uh, I took a very bold step. I did a, like a free uh, workshop, five-day event, because I've, I've been hearing from all the, the established coaches, this is the way to get your, <laughs> attract your leads in. Uh, so I did that organically first time round, and I had actually a, my first client out of it. But it was a, a discounted client. So she was going to be my beta client to, to test what I was offering. And so far, so good. She really loved what I was sharing with her. But I did another one um, back at the end of August, uh, early September. I did another free workshop. This time I thought I'll experiment because I know I've got the profile of my client from my ex existing beta client. I thought I use what she says in my copy. So I did a Facebook ad thinking that was going to get, generate me all these free <laughs> leads. Well, not free, uh, but, you know, effortless leads, not free. Um, so I think I did quite well with the campaign campaign in terms of getting um, signups. Um, so I had quite a good conversion rate and my landing page was working. But I also did a lot of work, legwork, organically. So I, I sort of turned up in people's Facebook groups. I got invited to do live uh, talks. Uh, and so I did get a few people in that way. And um, so all in all, I thought, oh, great, looking forward to this. Um, so I delivered my content. I think what I tended to do was over deliver. So I put too much content in there, too much value. Always me thinking I've got to deliver more rather than less. And when I followed up, it was like, oh, I haven't done this yet. Or oh, I've only on day one. I'm thinking, what? You've had over a week. And I leave the group open for two weeks. So uh, to cut to the chase now is like I thought, oh, that's it. Um, that's not really, and it didn't generate any clients that time around. So I think, what am I doing wrong? So I've created lead maggots. I've done sort of freebies and I've tried to sort of share those in other people's groups as well as on my personal profile. And nothing seemed to stick or, or to, to get me the traction. And I think deep down, I knew where my weakness was. It was very much in the selling side of things. So I can market, but it's just getting that client over the line. Uh, getting them to commit and I knew it was a lot down to my own self-belief um, I, and I although I do the energy work it's ironic because I can't seem to take it all the way <laughs> and uh, what I loved about Bernadette was that she um, really instilled that belief that confidence she had such um, knowing that you can do this you know with the steps that she shows you you can do this and lo and behold miracles can happen <laughs> 
<laughs> but with the right with the right system with the right guidance obviously <laughs> Well, we'll make sure that we, I mean, we, we'll dive sort of more deeper yeah, into it. I know, we've got to jump ahead, yeah. Post, uh, so it's after you join Plan B, but you know me, I can't help, you know, I always want to point out the teaching points. And yeah. what what I think you've just said that is relevant to many people watching this is that you were doing all the things you're supposed to do to get clients. So you were running challenges, you were putting out lead magnets, you were running Facebook ads, you were doing all of this stuff. Um, and you did, you did get some, it, you got interest from it and you got one paying client from it, but you didn't get the paying clients you expected to get for all of that effort that you were putting in. Yeah. And I, I, I want to like warn people of the pitfalls is that you, you know, if you, if you go and do all of that, those things which were about raising your profile and getting people interested without having a solid process for turning that interest into paying business, you're probably going to have the same thing happen. So hopefully we just saved some people a whole lot of heartache and certainly a lot of hours of doing the right things in the wrong order. Cause those are things that I think you could do later. So um, tell us about like the decision to join plan B, because as you say, we've connected a year ago and, and yeah. I agree with you. The timing wasn't right then for what we were offering then. Mm. We didn't have plan B then. Um, and then somehow I can't remember, we reconnected on Facebook, but you, you you then at this point with it like I really need to do something so what was going on for you that you're like okay I need help I think you must have been divinely guided to <laughs> contact me because you just said oh this might be you might have seen a post of mine I don't know um because I did a Facebook live uh, on my energy transformations page and I was talking about the threat of at the time it was just a threat of redundancy but I thought you know it's going to happen um but yeah and then you you popped up in my Facebook messenger and said um by the way, we've now got a plan B. This might be something bits of interest. So I then followed the link and looked into it. And I thought, um, so that then led to a conversation with, uh, with somebody in your team. And um, I think it was. Uh, but anyway, I just thought I've got to, I think I text messaged you back saying, I'm in. I, I really got to do this. I got to make it work because, um, yeah, that was at the time when I was just literally uh, knew I was going to be made redundant at the end of September. And I had my redundancy pay. I said, look, I'm going to wait. I can pay for it as soon as my redundancy pay goes. Or, or I can actually put it on a card and then pay it off when my redundancy pay comes in at the beginning of October. And, and so lo and behold, I did that. Um, so, yeah, but it was a leap of faith. It was a leap of faith in myself, uh, you know, trusting myself and also trusting in your process because, you know, you know, I didn't know what I was letting myself in for at the time, but I just knew I needed to change things. Something needed fixing. Yeah. And, and I remember you saying it's now or never. And like, yeah. you definitely can't, like this, this has got to be, there's no, there's no more time. There's, you know, I'm running out of time. I haven't figured this out on my own. Like I, I really need to um, get on top of this. Yeah. Um, what would you say was your biggest concern before you came into plan B? Like what would be, what would have been the reasons that you didn't join? You know, I suppose everybody thinks, um, you know, she's got lots of, you know, she's got this success record. Lots of people do really, do really well and they get met these um, really high paying clients. And I thought, well, can I do it? It's like that question, am I up to, up to the task? Um, I've done a lot of other sort of um, group coaching plans before. So even one, the sales based one and another one marketing related. And these were like um, quite a few hundred pounds each. and. To be honest, looking back, I think back on it now, I haven't really taken them. I haven't really adopted anything. I, I mean, it, it gave me a general understanding and knowledge, but really in terms of implementation, I think this is why Plan B has been so success, successful for me, is that you get the job done, you know? <laughs> it's like, and there's a good rapport in the group um, where we sort of help and support each other. And, and that I felt that with others, it was just too many, too many people in there and you just didn't get heard. You didn't feel that connection. You didn't have these calls with Bernadette, you know. And, um, you know, I think that made the difference as well. And that accountability, you know, and, and that belief, you know, all the time. You're just saying, because I was a, a point where I hit a low spot. <laughs> I don't know whether that's one of your questions coming up. Valley of despair. <laughs> the valley of despair, yes. Literally halfway through and thinking, you know, it's when you hear other people share their wins and you're thinking I haven't got a win yet and you're looking down <laughs> and you're thinking I haven't got a win yet I don't need, I haven't even had a sales call <laughs> or I had one booked I think oh I had to defer one that's right I couldn't make it in the end and we postponed it and I just thought I haven't got a win yet and it's funny but because I was 
at the point thinking this is no good this is the same as all the other stuff I've done before even though we had that good vibe in the group but I just thought am I really up to it do I have the material to make a really good coach and a salesperson and um but to be honest there was that then you came out of that trough and I don't know what it was that I let go of the need to actually have an outcome I just trusted in the process in the journey and started to relax and enjoy what I was doing rather than make it, oh, I have to count, I have to do it, you know? And, yeah. and I think as soon as you turn, learn to relax, and I know all about that because you release the resistance in your energy and things start flowing and, and it did, you know, and I started trusting that the connections would come and then they did. Um, you know, my con- connection or my sales, uh, the conversion rate was a bit higher for me. I had to do more connections, but in the end, what I found was that, you know, when I did my sales call, I was showing that I can sell. <laughs> I can sell when I'm really connected with the person and really interested and want them to, to, to you know, um, yeah, to step into their power. Like Bernadette's telling us to step into our power. And then when I instill that confidence in my clients, and I know how it feels when I when Bernadette instills that in me and I try and do the same on a sales call call and I I really sort of say I believe in you you know and mm. I'm so excited for you and you, it, literally that excitement becomes infection and they suddenly get caught up in it and thinking yeah I can do this maybe I can. <laughs> so um, I just want to go back to something you you said a moment ago which is like you've done programs in the your concern before you joined was yeah you've done other things yeah. and I think I really want to um, I appreciate you saying that those thoughts of can I really do this? Do I have what it takes to be a coach? Can I really sell? I think a lot of people have those fears and doubts and they don't voice them. But I, w- I want you to tell me, why did you implement here when you've taken programs in the past that you haven't implemented? What was the difference? Um, I think it was just, uh, it was very focused. It was very focused. And the, um, the message that you gave us was very clear. The, the system was very, very structured, very, very clear cut as to, as to what we do first, what we do next, the numbers involved and, you know, and, you know, just trusting it, trusting that process. If you follow it through, you will see the results. And I think that's what made the difference for me. And, um, and then, yeah, the, con- the connection that we have on the calls as well, you know, this knowing that, there will be times when you sort of doubt yourself, but you know, you, if you just stick with it, you will persevere and succeed. Yeah, I'll just share a little bit about what you're talking about there, Esther, because we have a thing in, in, which isn't mine, by the way, there's a mm. thing called the emotional cycle of change. Mm. But I share it with people in Plan B and my other programs. And it's basically like any project or journey that you embark on, you're gonna start off feeling all kind of optimistic and positive. And then sooner or later, you're going to meet an unexpected obstacle. And a lot of people then at that point, they quit because they're like, oh, well, I wasn't expecting this. And then they, they say, well, this, what, this isn't for me, or I picked the wrong path, or it's the wrong time, or, or another reason. And they use that as a reason to, to quit. And I say, well, you, you, you meet an obstacle and your choice is you're going to step up, you're going to step down. Like, what's it going to be? Because if, in any, anything you do, and you can think about any projects that you've had in your life that have ever been successful – you'll notice that there was a point that you get into where you go, if I would have known it was going to be this hard, I don't think I would have started this thing. Exactly. Anything. Oh, like, even having children. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> I second that. You, you get to month eight and you're like, oh, I'm not so sure about this. But unfortunately, there's no going back at that point. For some of us, we do it time and again. <laughs> so on that, what would you, what would you say was, what, what, what was your most challenging moment during the journey? Was there a moment uh, when you attempted There to- wasn't one single moment. There were a few moments. <laughs> honest <laughs> i'm honest yeah there are a few moments i'm thinking i don't know i don't know whether this is going to work for me really <laughs> and, and i think it also came down to the fact that you know um when you've been wrongly sold to before you carry that with you in your energy this idea of i don't know whether i want to do this you know the selling because it just you know do you know what i mean but I think where the babe Bernadette just explains it is the selling really does come from the heart and it's really this desire for them to improve their lives and make something better of their lives. And when you're doing that from the place of serving them in this way, then selling just makes it so much. And to be honest, I've even told Bernadette on a call recently, I said, 
I'm really looking forward to my sales calls. <laughs> and I said I would never have dreamed of saying that before I started Plan B. And, I, you know, yet last year, would have, if I'd been forced to do a sales call, I would have been filled with absolute abject dread and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fear. And I think, um, and I'm normally quite a courageous person, but I think when it comes to sailing, it was always a big block for me. And yeah. I think it's just in, over time, just doing it and just learning to let go going with the rhythm, going with that pace. Um, it was quite, you know, it's quite a fast pace. So we'd say, you know, you need to be committed to this programme, but it'll be worth it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? I think that people do have so many fears around selling. You know, there's the fear of rejection and there's the fear of, um, you know, humiliation, that you're going to look foolish. There's a fear yeah. of being seen as pushy. Um, and, and another fear I came across recently is like the fear that the customer will say yes and then you're not going to be able to deliver what they've said yes to. So there's quite a lot to understand. Yes, I've, I've come across that too. Yes, but that was obviously, I, I'm at that phase now. I'm thinking I've just got to trust and believe in my own abilities and it will come, you know, because even though I've sort of pre-sold them now, um, like a, a skeletal package, most of it's not finished. And what I'm going to do is I'm telling them it will be a bit lots of customization. So I will go with the flow and I will go with it where because I'm all about energy, go with where the energy is taking me uh, and respond to what they need at the time. So I, I, this is what I'm saying is even if you're not certain what you would offer, but you know you've got something magical that can change people's lives, just go for it because this clarity will come. It always comes in the experimentation, in the, you know, uh, and just working with as many people as possible. And then you really fine tune your process, you fine tune your message, you fine tune everything really, and everything becomes so much clearer. I'm so glad you said that because so many people say to me, oh yeah, I know I'm going to do plan B, but... I need to go and get my offer sorted out first. I need to get my program all figured out first. And then when I'm ready to sell that, I'll come and talk to you. And I say, please don't do it that way. Come and do plan B to figure that stuff out because then you're going to create something that people really want to buy and it's validated because otherwise you can waste a lot of time. So were you clear on your offer when you came into plan B or do you think it got clearer during the process? Well, to be honest, I'll, <laughs> I'm going to debunk that as well a bit because I, I came in thinking I was quite clear. Then I got less clear. <laughs> and I'm thinking, do I really want to offer this course that I had in, have most of it, which but most of this is in my head? And they're thinking, I'll oh, just, just do it one on one, you know, and see what clients come my way and what I can do with them. But then I've gone moved back and I'm thinking, no, this is really what I had was pretty good. Um, and it can, it will flesh out with with working with more clients. So, um, so yes, I, I, an answer to your question, it was a yes and a no, really. <laughs> yeah. So, and I think it was basically down to my um, being more sure in my value and what I offer. And I think when you do this process, um, there are moments where you feel a bit shaky, but you will actually come out the other side, and then you will be more convinced. Uh, and yeah, more certain of your abilities. Yeah, definitely. That's on, so on important. All, all levels. Yeah, it's so important because I always say, as you know, I always say people yeah. buy certainty. So if you're having sales conversations or even, you know, connecting on social media and you're sort of uncertain about what you're offering and how it works and how you help people, that's always going to get communicated out, you know, you know, verbally through your energy, as you say. Yeah. And, uh, and then that then becomes a block to sales and getting more clients. Yeah. So what about your price point? Tell us about that. Um, well, I, I've always had difficulty in, in commanding the price that I know I'm, I should be worth. <laughs> and I think it comes from that place of being a therapist as well. I think we just want to give our love and, nurturing to everybody <laughs> and find it very difficult to to command a higher ticket um so because we feel that they we always prejudge and we always think oh they can't afford it because whatever but it's wrong to think that because the lady that first came on board she probably would have paid more I discounted there and then I wouldn't have if I'd done plan b <laughs> But this is going back in May, so <laughs> some months before. So I gave a half price in, in exchange for her giving really constructive feedback on, on, on my proposed course. 
bear in mind, as I say, it was proposed course. I was creating it on, on the fly as I went along, although the, the, the schematic was in my head. And um, so, but I found out from her that she, whilst she wasn't in work at the time or she was putting out applications and things like that, she did have a little nest. She had a little bit of money from her mother's inheritance. So um, it was, there was some money there. But so you don't, you never know, you know, there are always pots of money around. <laughs> and if they really want something, they will pay for it. Uh, and it's up to you to convince them that what you have is something so compelling, something that will literally change their lives forever. And, you know, and Benedict does that for us. And we learn from that. We absorb that and we um, take it on board. And, and I think it's also with my last call, which created, resulted in this high ticket um, uh, client for me was this I don't know it just sort of this transfer of confidence from Bernadette and then suddenly I was more confident I was more sure and it does come through in your sales conversations um, certainty is so precious and so few and I will just let you know because I had a, a sales call I was the actual um, potential client for somebody else last night it was a lady in America and we it was partly because I was doing connections and I thought oh I'll be curious let's see what she can how she sort of sells her co coaching and it was quite different from the way Bernadette teaches us and lo and behold I didn't sign up <laughs> you tell her she can't, needs to come do plan B I know <laughs> I wanted to say that but <laughs> you know she did all the wrong things really oh. and um I bless her no she was lovely uh, to be honest she's a lovely lady and I know she probably can work wonders uh in, in her own way but um she just I wasn't converted so there you are so um another reason I wanted to feature you is because um you know it's not like you came into plan b and you started you know back in sales straight away mm -hmm. uh, it, it it took a while and I think it's testament to your mindset and also the energy work you, that you do that you did on yourself to like keep going keep putting one foot in front of the other mm -hmm. And then finally, on day 28 out of the 30 day program, um, <laughs> you, you landed your client at a higher price point than, you, than you'd ever sold before. And um, is there anything else that you want to say about that journey or that process from coming in sort of not really clear, but then, you know, within a month, making making a, a bigger sale than you'd ever made before? Yeah. And I think what's what's what it now instills in me, the belief that I can it, it's a it's a system that you can carry on doing yeah. and it it's and you know, it will generate more clients. And that's yeah. what I think it's, it's just that belief. And, and as you say, I, I have fortunately got my, this energy alignment method. So we do sort of check in with our, what we call our body sway. So it's a, a biofeedback mechanism and we check where there are resistances. So I knew at one point I was like, literally all in my head energy and I was stopping myself from connecting to my heart and when I connect more to my heart I know I'm more in flow and there is more grace in what I do I'm less clunky and less mm -hmm. unsure I'm so much more sure when it comes from the heart and I'm just more instinctive so I knew I had to correct the balance get out of my head get out of this sort of monkey chatter this negative self-talk and so I do use that and it really does help um, and align to something really positive and magnetic and high energy. Um, that, so that does sustain me. And, you know, it is a way of being more resilient and be able to bounce back, I've got to admit. Um, but it's also knowing that once I got that sale, it's like, oh, this is just the start. Mm -hmm. I've just got a chink in in, in the in the curtain or in the door and I know I can widen it I can get more I can get I, I will do even more uh, more sales and I'll get better at this yeah I think that's where the real value is it's not the sales that you make inside of the program mm. which as you know we guarantee guys we guarantee that people make at least their investment back within those 30 days um but I think that the real value is in like who you become in the process and as you say now you're able to move forward mm. uh you are redundant as of are you redundant? I, I, yeah, this month I've been made redundant so yeah I'm no longer in full-time employment this month yeah. so how many how many clients do you think you're going to need a month in order for you to be able to sustain your kind of on, a, on a rolling basis yeah as a minimum I'm looking for three clients okay so it's not massive yeah well when yeah. you think I mean I had um 
am I allowed to say this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I had. Sorry, my husband's just. That's all right. <laughs> um, I had literally three sales calls and I got one sale out of it. Yeah. So that's quite a good ratio. So if I know, and then I know my ratios, so I know what I need to do to get three times as many. And that's what I want to get, you know. So so next month you need to book nine sales calls. Yeah. And same exactly. conversion rate, you're going to make three yeah. sales. And nine sales calls is very sustainable, really, isn't it, over a month? It is, yeah. Oh. And bear in mind, I mean, they're still doing my therapy business, although it has gone quiet because we're back on local lockdowns. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's something I can still keep ticking along as yeah. and when. Well, it's been such a great breakthrough, Esther. It's been a privilege to witness it. And I know that you're just going to carry on going from strength to strength. And, you know, um, you know, you mentioned like resilience and confidence and you've definitely developed that further in plan B. And, you know, I know that you, you, you're you going to continue it further as you take this forward. So is there anything else that you would like to say as a final message before we bring I it to a close? Say, if you think, oh, I don't know, everybody else can do it, but not me, just think again you can do this. Um, I've been in so many programs and I'm thinking, oh, this is not working for me. And just, you can do this. This is so achievable, this plan. It's so doable. Um, Yeah, that's all I want to say, really. All right. Well, listen, guys, if um, Esther's story has inspired you to check out Plan B, come on over to planb30.com or feel free to drop me a comment uh, below or you can message me and I'll happy, uh, happily have a, a chat with you about whether it's right for you, answer any of your questions. But the bottom line here is give us 30 days and you're going to get paying clients. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> and if you don't get more paying clients than you've paid to be in the program, then uh, you get a refund. It's that simple. So we stand behind it. We know what we do works. This could save you a lot of time and distraction with your Facebook ads and your Facebook challenges. We're just going to get you focused on the next 30 days and what it takes to bring in paying clients. So thank you so much, Esther. Enjoy the Bernadette. Thank you. uh, Yeah, yeah, keep it. I'll make sure to check back in with you so you can give us an update on how this unfolds for you. Definitely. Thank you so (laughs) much. Thank you, everyone.